Welcome back to Gold Fries. This is the Cooler Master Master Air G200B, which is a very, very low profile cooler that's suitable for your low profile Mini ITX small form factor setup. The price is about $45 US. Over in Malaysia, here is about RM160. And definitely, this really is the product that you should consider if you are running into space constraint issues. Now, let's dive into the details of the G200P. The Master Air G200P is slim and it comes with a 92mm fan with RGB LED. The underside is so glossy, you can use it to signal for help or if you're just trying to get some attention. From this angle, you should be able to see the dual C-shaped heat pipes in the cooler. The fins are aluminum while the plate is copper. The installation isn't complex, but it's tedious. You start by assembling the parts from the base plate for the G200P. After that, you attach the securing bracket to the back plate, and this process alone requires you to screw 8 items into place. After that, you can get the processor into place. Fortunately, the socket handle is not blocked by the securing bracket. Next up, you get the heatsink into position, and you have to secure it with two other screws. Now these screws are tricky as they do not stick well with my magnetic tip screwdriver and to get the heatsink properly aligned, you have to make sure you tighten it while using another hand to hold the heatsink in position. Attaching the fan to the heatsink takes another 4 more screws, so in total now, you have 14 items to twist. 4 for the fan, 2 for the heatsink and 8 more to twist if you want to remove the bracket. The Master Air G200P comes with additional accessories for you to control the fan sliding. And there's also the bundled thermal paste. The Master Air G200P is great for small casings or even small systems like the Astro Desk Mini where you want decent cooling but often have space constraint. The height difference between the G200P and the Wraith Stealth stock cooler is 16mm, so that's quite a huge clearance difference. The Master Air G200P cools really well considering its size. Here's the temperature I got using it to cool the Ryzen 5 3600 from AMD. Load test is done with Blender while gaming test is done by running Unigen Superposition at 1080p medium. Both of them have expected results. Now in case you didn't get it yet, the G200P works like the AMD Wraith Stealth stock cooler for the AMD Ryzen 5 3600 but at a much smaller volume. And the good thing about it is that the fan isn't loud. And speaking of the fan, let me show you the lighting. The controller allows you to change the color, the lighting mode, and the brightness of the LED. It's nothing fancy, but it's something good to have. One other shortcoming of the G200P is how it holds the processor so well when it's in place. You might think that you can just warm up the thermal paste first and twist it before removing, but here's the thing, you can't twist the heatsink at all when the sticks that hold the heatsink in place are hindering it. In my initial attempt, I actually took the CPU out with the cooler, but I know what I'm doing, so the pins weren't bent. Please, do not try this. On my second attempt, I heat up the paste and gently pry it open with a screwdriver. Note that this is an open bench, so if it's already in a system, then things get a little complicated. Alright, we've come to the end of this video. The G200P, I, I really like it a lot for its purpose. It's really good, but the installation process and the changing, you know, and even getting stuck and have no room to twist and remove the, the, the cooler from the processor. Ooh, those are the things that I really didn't like. So it's getting a silver badge for me. Yep, still good stuff. Silver badge. I hope that Cooler Master can improve on those matters. You know, I don't mind it being a little bit taller, but I really, really do not like to go through the process of installation with so many screws and really having it being stuck and unable to remove the processor without exercising a lot of caution and hopefully does not pull the processor out from the socket of which it actually happened to me. All right, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, I hope you will click the subscribe button. After all, I need all the support I can get to keep things going. Thank you for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.